What up everyone, Zunabra here coming at you with another video. Today we're going to review the new patch uh, 7.14 that came very quickly, like about like two weeks after the 7.13. So I'm very actually very curious about it. It's very long, so this video should be like in the 20 minute mark. Uh, so this is going to be like a complete review. I'm going to read everything. I'm going to explain you uh, how the meta is going to be affected and what you guys should be looking forward to, what champion you should maybe uh, learn. And we'll go over everything and hopefully it should be an interesting uh, patch. So... The first thing is Kane, of course. Kane is the new the new champion. You guys have, might have seen some uh, PTR, uh, PBE, sorry, uh, video from other YouTubers. It sounds like an amazing champion. We'll see. Apparently, it's a jungle. I will do a video about it when it actually comes out. Um, but right now, I just seen what you guys have seen on YouTube and all that stuff. It looks fun. Again, I'm not a jungle player, so I don't really look forward to it. But it's always nice to have a new champion. So the first change is going to be for Alistar. So Alistar doesn't get changed a lot, at least for the past few patches. And he's going to get some damage reduction on R um, increased. So the damage reduction will go from 50 to 55 in mid game, in like early game, uh, just plus 5%. All, all across the game actually going to 75% in late game which is very good obviously it's a really nice up and now we will display uh, how much damage uh, is mitigate, mitigating per damage intense okay so it will just be some data showing how many basically how many damage you didn't take that you should have take next uh, up or next change is on kit lane so the attack speed per level is going down which is a very very good change so you see like they're not changing the traps they're not changing the damage of spells or anything because this doesn't didn't need to be changed but they decided to change the at a speed per level we're in a meta where we actually sometimes have attack speed on runes we have a lot of very valuable attack speed items so that was a very very interesting um change especially because blade of the rune king is coming back this gives it tech speed plus like static shave or like phantom dancer that was just way too much and level 18 Kathleen was such a bully so that would actually make her scale a little less but it's still a very valuable pick so you can go for it you can even compensate that with runes uh you can build i think it's the yellow runes that no i think it's the red or Actually, I'm not sure which one. I think it's the red. You put, or you put attack speed on your quintessences. Red, you would put some lethality uh, and some attack damage. Armor in seal and magic resist or magic resist per level in glyphs. So, not really sure about that, but that's just a way for you to compensate that nerf. So Shogaf, okay, so Shogaf is getting super, super changed. I can see like new, 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 new all over it. So just let's read this. So E now applies... Um, only applies to next three attacks, but does significantly more damage. So that was interesting. I always thought that Shogaf had like a wasted um, spell. I mean, the E used to cost you mana every attack, and it was just like cleaving. Like, it means that every auto attack was summoning like spikes that were hitting a uh, target that were in front. It was good for farming, I guess, but I mean, in team fight, it was not really relevant, except if you had like line injuries and right lives and stuff like that. But that's a really good change. I think like Shuga was like a leftover champion. Uh, so let's see what they do. So the cooldown is going to be 8 to 4 seconds. And uh, so actually like this means that you can put it all the time. Because you're not going to be able to attack speed on Shogaf. So by the time you do like 3 auto attacks. You should be able to do it all the time once it's level 5. 30 mana which is not a lot. Um, the base damage. Okay. And change. Max health damage. Max health damage. Wow. Okay. So, plus one, one per feast stack. Okay, that's really good. That's really, really good to shred tanks. Uh, decaying slow. Okay. Uh, now grants 50 extra basic damage range. Wow, okay. I feel like this is to compensate a little bit of response to what they did to um, Jax's W. Now, I guess, like, some activate on some, like, auto attack spells are getting more range, are giving, like, this little bonus that makes it like very very nice so that's that's a very interesting i wonder if they're going to do this with many other champions that's that that should be interesting to see now we said shogas basic attacks tamer okay so that don't worry like you just auto attack and e and you do like two attacks instead of one 
and bug fix, we don't care. So Q, the rupture is the circle that allows it to stun with all the, the pikes coming out. So this spell is just getting nerfed in late game, literally just in late game, you're losing 5 damage, and the mana cost is going down. So yeah, that was a problem, Shogat had very high mana cost, and the laning phase was just so bad, like, it was just so hard, and yeah, very hard to manage. That's why, I mean, that's why people d wouldn't pick it, like, the mana cost is absolutely insane, and it's also a champion that, if you miss the Q, you're, pr like, you're so, like, defenseless like you have no burst you can't really follow up on any of your spells gap closing is very hard i would even give him like some sort of like movement speed buff upon like touching the q or like the w that would have been actually nice for shogath i still don't think he's valuable even with all this update here so and the w so the silence is the silent duration is just going to be upped in early game and will stay the same in late game at two seconds Alright, so now we're talking about Diana. Uh, Diana, passive attack speed uh, now procs of spell cast. Okay. And increases with E ranks. Okay. Passive attack now restores mana. Oh my god. QQ spell reduces at early levels. W mana cost reduced at early levels. Okay, so let's just see what happens. So the passive moon slaver uh, attacks the passive wins 20%. Okay, so that's no, not, no, it's not that. Okay. But Diana spell cast grants 20% attack speed for her next three attacks, increasing with Moonfall ranks. Okay. Increasing. Okay, so the attack speed is increasing, not the attacks. Okay. Moon's attack restores mana to equal to 15% of Diana's ability power. What the fuck? Okay, that, that seems really overpowered for some reason. Like, why? It's a burst champion that needs spells to farm, and they're doing this? Okay, I mean, we'll see uh, how this affects. I feel like this is just putting Diana in the, in the meta. This is insane. What the fuck? Um, the Q spell is going down in early game in terms of cooldown. The same in late. That's not bad, guys. Honestly, in the pull cascade, it, the cost goes down in early. Whoa, that's a huge up for Diana. What the hell? And the U increases my basic attack bonus by what? Wait, wait. Increases my attack speed bonus. Oh, okay, okay. So is that so? Fifty percent means that it goes from twenty to thirty. Okay, okay. I thought it was like that's the attack speed bonus. No, no, no. It increases the Moonslayer Blade's attack speed bonus to fifty percent. No, to fifty percent. Wait, what? I feel like the two is super confusing. Is it two? Like, is it going to fifty percent, or is it increases by thirty twenty fifty percent? Well, is that level five? How fast you're gonna attack with Diana? So what you're gonna get some? What item can you get on Diana now for attack speed? So of course you're gonna get Nash's Tooth, maybe like Wits End, maybe something like that, and you go full attack speed and you just wrecked some people. That's gonna be interesting. Like I don't think you should play AP. Uh, I mean you should play AP Diana, but like not fully like. I don't know, that, I'm sure there's going to be some interesting builds uh, to look for. So Fiora is getting changed, the passive is going to be uh, decreasing the movement speed all across the game, so mid to late game, and the R no longer grants the only stance movement speed when near the target. Okay, so it's a, it's quite a nerf here for movement speed and gap closing for, for Fiora. Uh, we don't see a lot of Fiora, so I don't think that will just change anything, we're just going to see less of it, so yeah, we can just skip that. Garen, damn, Garen being changed is, for me, Garen is like, it's always been the champion for like, that we only see this champion in bronze and silver, I feel like we never see it anywhere else, like, that's crazy, by the way, Garen is a great counter to Aurelia, so, passive modernization, so let's see what they did, out of combat, health generation, so, Garen, when he was out of combat, he used to regenerate a lot of HP, actually, so that makes him a very good champion for that, out of combat, 2, 4, and 10% maximum health per 5 seconds. Goes to 2 and 8 maximum health per 5 seconds at level 1 and 11. So no buff at level 16. Out of combat timer will go from 9. Okay, so they just literally deleted the data from the mid level. The mid game, so level 11. And they decreased the maximum health at level 11 to 8%. So like midway to that. Okay, okay, I guess this is a cool, um, this is just a cool balancing aspect, I think. Uh, and nerfing the late game, also. 
So dimension boldness. Regeneration increased to 4 to 16% maximum health per round when Garen is below 25 50% maximum health. Okay, that's interesting. I found they're going to do this. They're going to do this for other tanks. I think they're going to start doing this for other tanks. This is just a start with Garen. This make, doesn't make him valuable necessarily, but this is actually very interesting. Courage. So, Courage is just the shield that gives him a little bit of armor and resist magic. Now, this place, how much damage Courage is mitigating. Okay, I guess I don't know how the data is going to be shown. I wish we had some sort of screenshot, but it must be like a number of like number you didn't take that you should have taken. Sell your Courage. Non grants Garen 60% damage reduction in tenacity for the first 0 0.75 seconds, returning to normal. 30% reduction for the remaining uh, duration thereafter. Okay, so just a little buff for this. That's that's always nice. Tenacity is huge though. 60% tenacity is you're gonna be able to make some sick escape, especially with the Q you know, and everything. So the judgment, so the spin to win is actually gonna get a buff by two two percent at each rank. So just an increase of damage on total attack damage. Always nice. Better ratio, more damage. So Ivern now. Ivern that we've seen a lot ever since that has been launched, but we see less and less as it's becoming a champion that is really interesting to play, but just doesn't do a lot of damage. Um, it's very hard to play. I feel like it's just a hard champion to play. I haven't tried it personally, but I feel like it's one of the champions, like, you play it super well or you just suck at it. So the, the W cast range is being decreased, so the Bruce Master, and it's been divided by two, actually. So that's actually... A huge nerf I feel. Uh, if you guys are an Ivan player let me know what you think down below if it's really really bad or maybe you can still play it. I don't personally know and I'm not going to share stuff that I don't know guys so I'm not an Ivan player so make sure you, you tell me what you think about this. Damn that's dividing by two or range that doesn't sound like a good thing at all. Ramus, okay, Ramus, they're making changes to Ramus. So self slow on W decrease in intensity. So when you had the W, which is like um, the Thornmail uh, spell of Ramus, you were slowing, you were slowed down, obviously, and it was very intense. So it goes from 60 to 30 percent. So also something divided by two, and just a bug fix or whatever. So that's actually really nice for Ramus. I feel like this is really really cool. So Singed, okay, Singed is really interesting. Singed is a champion that I don't want to see. I personally think that Singed is not a fun champion to have. Uh, I remember the meta when it was like proxy Singed, like it used to be a meta, and you used to end the game at like 110 int intentionally, and you used to win and make and drive everyone crazy, and like it was just insane. I hope it's not coming back in the meta. I just don't like seeing it at all. I don't think it adds anything fun to the game. Except for the guy that plays it, of course. So base stats. Base health is going up tremendously. Almost plus 50. Health growth is going up as well. Plus 8. He has a new passive called Noxious Slipstream. So... Okay, when Singe passes with, within 225 range of a champion, he drifts him off of them, getting 20% bonus. Do you think as you change 10 second cooldown? Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. Okay, so I guess like when you get close to a champion, you get more movement speed. That's that's like super nice for gap closing. That's really. Why are you doing this, Riot? Like, why why you want me to? I don't want to be unhappy, man. And since only against health and base on his X mana. Okay, that's ah, I forgot about that. That was really cool as well. So they took it off. Uh, the poison. So the base damage is going down at all levels, but the ratio is going up. The particle size increased to more clearly represent the poison area of effect. That's uh, hopefully they done this right because it was really weird, honestly. Especially if you have low graphics. If you play on like low to medium in terms of uh, graphics, it was so hard to see what the poison was actually like, where it was actually, and the thickness of it and everything. So that was really, it was very hard. Hopefully they made a great update, especially for those who don't have a great graphic card. And a bug fix, we don't care about that. So W Mega Adhesive, okay, so the W is like the, the little glue he puts on the floor. Area donation, 3 seconds, that's very very short. Extra ticking down grounds units within the Mega Adhesive Pundle. Okay, Puddle, okay so Puddle is the middle of it, right? So actually you might be stunned, or like just rooted for a bit. Slow is 40% at all ranks, okay that's a huge nerf though, because level 5 it used to be 75%, like... 
it's almost as hard as in uh, as in Nessus W. That was insane. And what's been removed is that it doesn't no longer lingers for one second after the enemy leaves. Uh, okay, so there's nothing after he, the person leaves the area. The cost is going down. And the cooldown is going down in late, but it's going up in early game. And this is not a spell that people maxes, so actually it will affect uh, late game. Fling. So fling is just the uh, the fling. I want to say the the singe fling. That's it. Like it, no need for a better name. And the mana cost is going to go down in early game and go up. And no, stay the same in late game. Okay, that's great. That's actually great for ganking and stuff. Level three, you'll be able to to fling and not spend all your mana, so you'll be able to poison away and make some damage. And insanity poison the R is just going to be go down in mana and bonus stats um, is just going to go up. So welcome Maxinge, you are you officially back into the top lane. I don't know what kind of singe. I think there's so much picks that are interesting against this champion. The new passive is broken. I think this is absolutely insane. This is this is like okay, we need a thing to make him gap close even more. This is great. What? Like this is great. I don't know. I really don't realize what two twenty five range is. But damn, that's a lot. All right, let's move on. Tarek. Tarek, uh, that I love, I really do love his um, rework, but I haven't played him ever since, uh, maybe a month or two ago. So, the mana increased in the early level. Okay, so let's just read the changes. Base stat, mana is increased. Mana region growth is decreased. Starlight touch. So, healing per charges is going to go uh, maximum health. Okay, that's actually interesting. I think this is an up. This is an up because Terry gets a lot of health from from just like the itemization gives him health, especially with the support items that give more and more health now. So I think this is an up in I mean it's definitely an up in late game, early game maybe not. So max charges uh, three at all time one two three four five okay five charges should be interesting in late game. So I guess they're just changing the late game look late game late game changes. Cooldown 3 seconds, oh ok, so there's a cooldown now, recharge rate 15% and change, and now bravado empowered attacks, uh, register start that cooldown by 1 second and instantly grants a charge. Ok, so that's actually interesting, if you need to instant heal or something like that, that's, that's actually really nice. And the E, which is the stun, the damage is going up in late game, and actually at all ranks. The cooldown is going down in late game, but up in early game. And the stun duration is actually stabilizing at the mid-game range that it used to have. So Tarek, better in late game, member a better pick. Is he entering the meta of support? It's hard to say. It's it it is a very interesting support with like control, defense, uh, stats for um, for uh, the ADC, a great ultimate. And heal like it sounds perfect. Now that it's been up in late game, I think we're gonna see more of it. Definitely, this is super interesting. Like the whole healing thing, that's that, this could be huge to be honest. And the fact that the mana here is compensated, that could be a really it could be a really nice support play. If you're a player, if you're a support player, let me know if you are planning on picking up Tarek. I would advise it to be honest. Yorick is being changed as well. So Mist Walker, so the passive base damage down in early game. The meta of the Mist is uh, health up late game. Miss Walker more responsive, and Graves more consistent. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. So just the range is going up, and the spawn range is going up as well. <sighs> God, Yorick is so annoying in lane. I'm not even excited to that. If we start having singed Yorick matchup though, it should be it should be fun to spectate. And the R, the Eurology of the Isles, the cooldown is going down tremendously, and the base health is going up as well in late game, so this should be interesting. Mid patch balance update, so Nunu got some changes, uh, th like, I guess, like mid mid patch. Zach as well, Zach very, very strong, like super meta uh, jungle right now. Uh, okay, so we're done with champion guys. Let's move on to the items. So Thornmails is getting amazing updates. So I saw on Twitter a Riot employee talking about it. It's like, how would you rate this item from one out of ten? And I literally said eleven. Like this is gonna be a must-have item, which could affect the game very badly since team fight won't be fun for ADCs, 
And I feel like we're moving towards a very tanky oriented meta, which I'm not a fan of, but I guess this is circle cycles or something like that. I just I just want I like I just want an assassin meta doing war championship. Like I don't want to see war championship with a tanky meta. That's so boring to watch. It's so boring to shout cast. It's just so boring to it's not entertaining. So what happened to the Stormail is that sorry about that. So the path is going to be changed. So you have a new item called Bre uh, Brendel Vest that we're going to talk about that is right here. And it's going to cost a little more gold. So you're going to go at uh, 2,900 gold. The armor is going down, but you're getting health. Like, you know, you're getting health from Thormel. What the hell? And look at this. So upon being hit by the basic attack, reflects magic damage. Okay. Equals to 25 flat damage plus 10% of your bonus armor inflicting grief wounds on the attacker for one second so not only you're dealing damage you're dealing magic damage okay you plus you're dealing damage off of your armor count plus you putting griefing wounds like literally like you never want to like you're in adc you're literally gonna cry right now like double is must cry reading this like all those people must cry sneaky must cry reading this he's gonna see this he's gonna be like Okay, I attack him. I take damage, and I don't get uh, I don't get as much lifestyle as I can. This is just gonna be stupidly like this is just gonna be built by anything. This is gonna be nerfed ASAP. Let me tell you that. So when hit by a basic attack, cripples source attack speed. What the fuck? Oh, I forgot about that. Now the shit is a randwin, guys. It's a randwin. It's literally a randwin. When hit by a basic cripple source sources attack speed by fifteen percent for one second. <sighs> no cooldown nothing like there's nothing there's no cooldown it's not like oh yeah you just get one second of debuff on your attack speed no 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 it's every time you hit me bro it just adds one second no cooldown bro Whew. and it's not even that expensive like this feels like the trinity force of tankiness to be honest all right Oh wait, let me see. Actually, against champions and teams that lean on heavy healing and regeneration effects, tanky melee types sometimes feel like they're actually hurting their teams by serving as convenient health batteries. While matches have no real recon and other carries and exile curling uh, to help focus down a healing oriented threat, we wanted to make sure that melee champs can at least force high sustain damage dealers to look elsewhere for their healing. I get that. Okay, I get that. Riot Games. But this is just moving us to a tanky meta that no one likes. And I think that's a mistake. And this should be nerfed. This this shouldn't even be here. Like, the item is so good with this. Like, you don't need that. What the fuck? Like, really? You need that, dude? Nah. Fuck that. So one of the component of Fornail is called Brennel Vest. And that shit costs nothing. So cloth armor. Cloth armor is 300, 300 plus 300, 900. You get 35 armor. And you get the Thornmail stuff with the Griffin ones with ma with just magic damage flat. So that's not super good. It's like a mini Thornmail, but it's 900 gold. 900 gold, guys. All right, let's talk about Ancient Coin Line now. So quest rewards now grants uh, movement speed to approaching allies instead of an early scale point. Okay, that's not really. It's like for Rakan and other things. So that's not really important. Uh, Rendred's Omen. So build path updated grants more health. So you get. Less gold. Then I just bail water nine plus nine hundred gold. Okay, and you go for total cost. Okay, so the total cost is unchanged, but you get the mail and okay, so that used to be the that actually used to be the fine sunfire cape before. Plus nine hundred gold. Okay. Nine hundred gold is a lot to complete an item. I think this should be less, man. Of it like completion of items should be less to be honest. And health is going from you get an extra 50 health. That's always uh, that's always nice. Okay, updated recommended path. Lethality knows general knows. Lethality now grants penetration based on your target level. Wait, what? Lethality grants armor penetration based on your target's level. No, on your level. Why? Riot, like, what is going on, Riot? Like, you guys are doing a tanky meta, but you're not allowing people to come back in games it means that so basically you're behind you level like you're an adc level 14 in front of you you have an adc level 16 or like tanks level 16 and all that shit but because you're level 14 your armor penetration is going it's like it's not even that effective against your enemy just because you're level 14 so it doesn't even give you an 
that doesn't give you a bridge or like an opportunity to come back at all. What's up? Uh, what's up with that? What's up with that, man? Okay, let's move on. So items, tooltip, non display. Okay, fuck this. Completion, uh, lethality items. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. Okay, okay. Let's. Okay, okay. Fuck that. And mobility has been removed for humans. Guys, blah. Lethality items. No go. Okay, okay. So Serdid Dirk. Um, passive updated to grant your next ability bonus damage after killing a unit. Okay, so Headhunter. After killing an enemy, your next damage spell with will deal forty percent physical damage to all enemy it hits. Thirty second cooldown. Okay, okay, why not? No one can grant strength within a combat. Okay, okay, why, I mean, why not? Uh, sure. I don't, like, you see, sometimes changes don't make sense. For me, that change doesn't make any sense. But, whatever. Uh, Pusher's Dirk now, so it gets the same shit and loses the same shit, okay. Uh, Dusbeck of Drach, Drakar, Draktar. Uh, okay, that's a big change, man. Wow, that's gonna be a long video, guys. I'm sorry if you guys uh, have to endear all of that. But the build path is being changed. The total cost is going down. The lethality is going up. The attack damage is going down. Out of combat movement speed. No longer going to 20 out of combat movement speed. Uh, no longer, okay, okay, whatever. That was actually nice for like players like Zed and everything. That was actually nice. Uh, now grace 10% cooldown reduction. Yeah, let's just add 10%. Yo, let's just add 10% uh, cooldown reduction, please, for table 9. Uh, why? 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 Like, why? What do you mean 10% cooldown reduction? Okay, 90 per level. Okay, true damage. Oh, okay. So we're going from true damage to physical damage. Again. Again, man. You give... You give... You give tankies more power like no no riot give us the true damage to rank those tanky people or make something like in maximal health bonus damage or some, some, some stuff like that now stocker now slows the target by 99 percent for oh my why so you tell me that you are someone like you you attack someone he's stunned he can't move for 0 0.25 seconds There's a difference, by the way, but from 99% to 100%, that means that if he's stunned, he, uh, you can, like, uh, cancel a spell or something like that. 90% is just, like, you can do things, you can flash, you can do all that stuff, but it's still not stunned. This is so... Okay, well, you want to... Sorry, you want to build this item, guys. This item is broken. Zed is gonna... So the thing is that, yo, you want to play Zed when you see that, right? You're like, oh, CDR, uh, cost is going down... I'm getting a stun, I'm getting physical damage, whatever, I get lethality, I'm not getting true damage, but it's okay, who gives a shit, and, actually you want to play Rengar as well, that's that's also crazy, but you're like, oh, but in front we have people with thorn mail, and, like, I don't even know if I can jump people and just, like, kill them, but, I don't know, do you see how weird this is, like, it's not like, I don't think this patch is a success, to be honest, so far I'm not really liking it. So the Yumus Gunblade total cost is being unchanged. Out of combat movement speed f doubled. Lethality increased. Attack damage decreased. Just a small balance, I guess. Nothing. No biggie. Edge of Night. I think Edge of Night is such an interesting item. Not not used by a lot of people, uh, but it's definitely an interesting one. So it grants health instead of magic resist, and lethality is going up. Okay, so no longer, okay, lethality is going up. Attack speed is not changing, and it just grants two hundred and fifty health for. No cost, but you're losing 35 magic, the magic resist, and you're losing the movement speed out of combat, uh, which is interesting as well. Krogs, okay, can be smited, vision ability, attack, uh, queuing, okay, so this is just stuff that you don't care. Rank it flex, okay, rotation cabin. I don't like this one by the way. The thresh one, I really don't like it. Uh, the custom, I have audio effect, the bug fixes, we don't care about. Upcoming skin, pull party graves. Uh, oh, those are Chroma skins, okay. Pool Party Lulu and Pool Party uh, Fiora. So, go buy the shit, guys, if you guys want. Um, honestly, man, this patch, just to tell you a little bit about my overall feeling about this, is that we're moving into a tanky meta, and I'm not liking it at all. I get it how things have to rotate, so that, like, like you can't enjoy the sun without a little rain. I guess the tanky meta is a rain, but... I just hope that for the World Championship, we're not going to have a boring-ass 
tanky meta where nobody kills each other, there's no action until 20 minutes, and everybody waits for the late game, and the viewing experience is terrible, and all that stuff. So I just want that not to happen. But yeah, we're going to have to endure this patch, guys. I don't think it's a good one, to be honest. I really don't want to see tanks coming up and just ruining the game. If we start seeing like some Singe, some Yorick, some people building like Thornmail at 20 minutes, uh, it's going to get ugly, guys. So let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. Uh, are you guys going to play... I want to know if you're going to play Arvin. I want to know if you're going to play Singe, if you're going to play Yorick. And I want to know what you guys think overall about this patch. Uh, do you guys like the tanking metas? Uh, what, what are you guys going to plan on playing and stuff? This is there's there's some good news as well. We'll talk about Kane. I promise you guys when he when he comes out, I'll make a video about it, explain you why I like it, why I don't like about him. I don't want to go and do PB videos because it's not the champion that is going to be released, so it's kind of useless. Um, even though those videos can make views, I just don't make them because I don't see the point. I do have PB access actually, which is uh, well something I just don't use. Uh, but yeah, so basically guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you for the next patch review and for a new video tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching guys. Peace.